What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be talking about rooms in Revit. How can you kind of note where your rooms are on your project, how can you maybe present them in a better way using color and then how can you use that information, how can you pull information from your model to get information about your rooms like the like the area of your room, the perimeter, as well as all of the finishes and much more. But before I get started, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial. It helps me out a lot. And if you haven't already, I suggest you subscribe because I make videos like this every day. Okay, so this is the project that I'm going to be using. And if you want to check it out, how I created this floor plan and as well as a tutorial on how I converted it to a 3D floor plan and created this cool looking rendering. Please check out the, the links in the description. Uh, those tutorials are already up on my channel. But okay, now I'm just going to cancel out of this and go into level one. So this is the floor plan we're working with. And here we've got some rooms and now it's time to kind of uh, kind of make some annotation elements just to mark those rooms and to see them better. Okay, so for that I'm going to be using this architectural tab and here we've got some room options or room tools and let's get started with this room tool and the shortcut for that is RM so you can use that as well. And it looks kind of like this and then if you hover over a room as you can see it kind of lights up blue and then you can place this room on your on your floor plan and here it says tag on placement so you can check this and uncheck it so let's uncheck it for a second so like this it will only be kind of a uh, an element that pulls information from the model it won't place a tag and if we turn this on you will have a tag so let's start placing so let's do one over here let's uh, place one room over here one here for the bedroom and one for the bathroom Okay, so once we have this, we can just cancel out of this. And then if you kind of hover around, you get this kind of cross sign and you can use that to select your whole room. And as you can see here, we've got a bit of a problem. Uh, we've got this living room area, which is fine, but I don't want to uh, have the same room that's the living room and the kitchen and this entry as well. I like, I would like to have them as separate rooms, but we don't have any boundary between these but I don't want to place walls between these rooms so how do you fix that well you go here and you find this room separator tool so I'm just going to select it and this allows you to create an annotation element that kind of separates the room so I'm going to place one line over here then go to room separator again and place another couple of lines over here to kind of separate this whole kitchen area and now if I select this room, as you can see now this is just the living room and here we've got the kitchen that's kind of separate and this entry is separate as well. So we need to create new rooms for these two. So to do that, just go here to room and let's do one for entry and one for the kitchen. Okay, another thing that you might have noticed is let's go to the bathroom over here. If I select this, you can see the bathroom is only this area over here, but this part over here that's for installations, it doesn't go into the into the area of the room. And maybe you want that to be a part of the room. So how can you turn these walls off as kind of boundary, but with keeping them in the model? You want to keep these walls, but you don't want them acting as a boundary for this room. And to do that, it's actually quite simple. You just go and you select the walls in question. So if I select these two walls, I can scroll down in the properties panel and find this room bounding option and just uncheck it. And now if we select the room, you can see these walls are no longer boundaries. And we can turn off these kind of walls that are just here for help. So I'm just going to select these two walls, this wall over here as well, as well as this one and just go and find a room bounding and just uncheck them. So now if I go and select this uh, ba bedroom, you can see here this isn't included. And also we have a problem here in the kitchen. If I just zoom in and select the room, as you can see, it doesn't count this, uh, this counter area over here. That's because we modeled it as a wall just for simplicity for drafting, but now we're having a problem. So we just need to select this wall. As you can see, it's called a kitchen element wall and just uncheck room bounding. And then if we select this room again, it's part of the room. And if you're not sure which 
walls are have room bounding and which don't you can go here to architecture and let's just go to room command again and you have this highlight boundaries and you select it and now as you can see here we've got these walls are all room bounding but these walls over here they're not so this allows us to see which ones act as room boundaries and which ones don't and these little room separators light up as well so you can see uh, where you have room separation. So let's close out of this. And now when we look at this floor plan it doesn't really look all that nice. We have these rooms and we can name them all so let's name this office. So just go office, this will be a living room, this will be a kitchen, oops This is the bedroom. This will be the bathroom. And let's just call this entry. Okay, so we've got all of these rooms kind of marked, but only the entry looks nice in the office and the bedroom. And in the bathroom, it's kind of overlapping, kitchen as well, and then in the living room, this tag and this annotation looks terrible. And if we move it over here, it kind of it doesn't look right this should be kind of in the middle of the room it should it shouldn't be kind of in the corner so how do you fix this well you can use color to kind of create a legend for all of your rooms in the project and for that you need to go here to the annotate annotate uh, tab and you need to find this color fill legend so you just select this and you need to place it somewhere on your floor plan this is an annotation element so it won't turn on in your renderings don't worry so when you place it you get this little dialogue and first we are not kind of creating a spaces a legend for spaces we are creating a legend for rooms so make sure to check rooms over here and for the color scheme let's go with name so every different name will have a different color on this floor plan and if I just hit OK as you can see now it created this lovely legend and it colored all of the rooms and all of the furniture is left white, which I think it's, it looks better like that. And now you've got all of the colors over here. And if you don't like the colors, I usually like the colors that Revit generates, but if you want to change them, you can just select this room legend and go here into edit. And now here you can edit the color. So you can go over here and maybe for this green, let's turn it into some dark blue. And let's add a hatch pattern. So let's use something like diag diagonal cross hatch 1.5 millimeter. Go apply. OK. And as you can see now, bathroom has this has this hatch pattern. So you can either use solid fills or you can use hatches to kind of mark your rooms. And now we don't really have a need for all of these uh, room tags. So we can select all of the tags and make sure you select just the tags, not the rooms like this and you can just delete them and now the color stays and you can see which room is which without having some ugly annotation elements on your floor plans and of course you can go in and change the the color make it kinda not so not so bright so you can so the whole floor plan looks a bit better so maybe like this yeah, this looks a bit nicer. It's not screaming out loudly as that yellow color did. Okay, so we've got a cool little floor plan with a nice room legend, but now it's time to pull some information from this model, of course. That's the point of Revit. So let's create a, sh a schedule where we're going to have all of the areas of the room, the names of the rooms, and maybe the perimeter or something like that. We can add something more. So to do that, go here into the project browser, search down, and find this schedules quantities and right click and create new schedule quantities and here we just need to scroll down to rooms let's see okay here we have rooms and here let's just call it room schedule and for phase of construction it should be new construction and if you're using some phasing you can use existing or whatever but for most projects it will be new construction so just hit OK and now here we need to add all of the uh, parameters that we want to have in our schedule. So let's use area, that's important. Another thing I like to use is name, so let's find name. Okay, here we've got name, maybe the number, but I, I don't want to have it for this one. 
and maybe the perimeter that's nice to have and you can add maybe a level so if you have a two-story house you can have levels but this is just a one-story house so I don't need that and maybe the account if you have maybe more bathrooms or something like that but anyway this is enough for this project so let's just hit OK and here we have our schedule and as you can see it first says area then it says name and then it says perimeter I don't like that I would like to have name first then the area then the perimeter so you just go here into fields in the properties panel in the fields go edit and here just select name and kind of move it up and hit OK and another problem I'm seeing over here is you can see this is now in square meters but it kind of rounds it up at the full number and usually you want to be precise with uh, uh, with uh, room areas because usually room area equals money so you want to be precise with these numbers so I'm just going to go back into level 1 and just hit UN for units and go here into area and change this by adding two decimal point places and hit OK OK and now go back into our schedules quantities open up room schedule and as you can see here now this is a lot more precise we've got this is this was 38 and now it's 38.63 so it's a lot more precise this room schedule but anyway that's it for this tutorial this is how you mark rooms and how do you how can you pull information for from your rooms and create cool looking schedules okay so that's pretty much it for this tutorial thank you for watching please subscribe like and share this video and if you have any questions comments or suggestions for future tutorials please leave them in the comment section below thank you for watching and have a nice day